Yeah, very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Dirk Hormikhausen. I'm the manager director for AORT Middle East in the UAE. I'm also a director of LTS AORT uh, fasting systems here in, in India. Um, I suppose a, a scenario all of us will be, will be aware of at some stage who works on construction sites. The steelwork has been, steelwork has been erected. The, um, the purlins have been laid. The liner sheets are on site. So is the insulation, and so are all the other materials, except nothing to hold any of those in place, which are the fasteners. This is where we, as uh, LPS air fasting systems, come into the equation. First of all, a little bit about AOT. AOT are a German group of companies specializing in the manufacture of building fasteners. One of the largest or one of the leading manufacturers of building fasteners uh, in the world. It's a privately owned company. Uh, we now, it's headquartered in Germany. We also enjoy 30, 35 uh, sales and distribution offices uh, throughout, this <laughs> throughout the world. And um, privately owned for those who are interested in, uh, in statistics. Group turnover was 370 million euros last year. Confirmation that we employ two and a half thousand, two and a half thousand staff. When I said to you, it was a, we are a, a global, a global uh, manufacturer or a global, a global supplier. It was always the aim of our current chairman to make this, to make AOT as a privately owned company into a global player, which in essence, we have, more or <coughs> we have now more or less um, achieved. There's not many places where our fasteners will not be, uh, will not be made available. AOT's core business, we are, we are manufacturing fasteners um, basically for two divisions. One is, the, one is a range of industrial fasteners, typically for the automotive, electrical goods, white goods industry, and also for uh, consumer electronics. And um, then a big range of, of building fasteners, um, details of which we'll hear a little bit about in, uh, in our forthcoming presentation. Our joint venture partner here in India is a household name for the majority of you. It's the company Lakshmi Precision Screws, based in, based in Haryana in, in Rotak. LPS have got um, <coughs> four manufacturing plants. Three of those are in Rotak. One of them is in, in Manasa. Well known, well known for its product range of high tensile fasteners. Again, industries covered are the automotive industry the aviation industry and also the oil and gas industry. For the, both for the engineers amongst you, the uh, manufacturing capacities um, will, um, will read with uh, lots of creden credentials, I suppose, to give you a brief uh, insight into uh, the fact that we are now, that we are as, as two manufacturers, we are experts in our, in our fields, not only in, in manufacturing those fasteners, but also in in the applications these fasteners are being used, being used in. Like I said earlier, our aim here as LPS Aero Fasting Systems is to provide fasteners, a full complement of fasteners for the full building envelope. Details of which we hear a little bit more later on from, uh, from Nippon. It doesn't, matter, it doesn't matter where these projects are these days. Um, you see here, the example of Kabul Gate Tower in Abu Dhabi. Um, desert environment, as you will all be, uh, all be aware. Um, for us, it is important that structural integrity is guaranteed with every single project we are involved in. This could also be projects in the, in the uh, Antarctic, which um, is one of the weather stations that was um, built a few years ago. Again, AO supplied fasteners for, for this project. Um, I'm not quite sure who will be familiar with, the, with an incident in the Ukraine in 1986. One of the local or the local nuclear reactor developed a major leak in one of the reactors. We go back to 19, uh, 1986. The reactor then um, had to be had to be covered after five or six years with a temp with a temporary structure, which was early 90s. The temporary structure, again, was meant to last for a period of 35 to 40 years. In essence, 
early 2005, first signs were um, detected, the structure was crumbling away, and people thought about, or engineers and consultants were thinking about a possible replacement, replacement structure. Now you imagine there was still radio, radioactivity in the, in the area, it was not, certainly not a clean environment to work in. So the structure had to, be, had to be constructed in a way that it remained movable and could be pushed over the existing old crumbling, uh, crumbling structure to secure the, um, <coughs> the nuclear reactor, the old building. Um, in this case, the requirement was for 100, 100 years, which again, EOT, and I'll mention it again a bit later on in more detail, uh, got involved in with fasteners, which we supplied for this project. This is just, in, in, I suppose, an example of how, how diverse these projects would be, fasteners, and we get involved in. Yeah, one one day we'll have definite climate. Next time, it could be a a, a nuclear site, uh, or it could be as diverse and be in Antarctic. But what all these projects have got in common is <coughs> that we need to have a way of finding a sound mechanical fix. For these, um, for these applications. Now securing a roof, as you can see it here, nice clean, um, nice clean environment, somewhere in, probably in rural Germany. Uh, it's not always as straightforward as this one, of course. It is important that from the outset of a project, we're making the right, the right choice of fasteners because the fastener, just like any other building material, is exposed to the same, to the same atmospheric conditions as the rest of the material. Yeah, one day we're talking, we're talking extremely, uh, extremely windy, windy conditions. Next time it could be temperature bound. Yeah, in this case here we'll have a polycarbonate roof light which was, which was fixed incorrectly. I have to stress at this one time, or I have to stress for these applications, it has never been a, a failure of fastening. It has been a failure in, uh, in in applying those fasteners. How little did the installer know that he'll have, for example, he'll have to pre-drill the polycarbonate roof light to allow for thermal movement on the polycarbonate roof light. But because he didn't, uh, it caused, finally caused the polycarbonate roof light to break under the pressure um, through uh, contraction. Also, fasteners will have to be in certain wherever, wherever, we're talking about exposed fasteners, we should, we should highly recommend the use of stainless steel fasteners. I suppose, again, in more detail, a little bit more later about the use of fasteners in various, um, in various environments, but again, this is as a result of incorrect used material being used. Um, same here, you see a leaking, a leaking sports stadium. Nobody wants to sit anywhere where the, where the roof has started leaking as a result, again, of faulty material or faulty installation being, uh, being undertaken. How do we define a good, a, good a good fastener? This is very general and this is perhaps very simplistic. However, it is not, it is not rocket science at the end of the day. Fasteners should be able to, we should be able to install it from one side. I remember we have got within, within our group, we have got a, a slide that actually shows uh, the installer hanging on a, on a makeshift, uh, uh, makeshift scaffolding, uh, trying to, to attach the uh, a knot to a, to a metric screw to, uh, to secure part of, his, uh, part of his facade. Exaggerated, yes, we take it now for granted. Uh, surely nobody does that. But sometimes you have to be honest, you have to say, uh, there's still a lot of, should I say, ignorance in the, in the market as far as the installation of fasteners is concerned. So we're going to say installation should be happening from one side. Also, any of the mechanically, or any of the fasteners used for mechanical uh, fastening should have, or should withstand any static or dynamic loads. It should be corrosion proof, and also it should be rain proof as you've seen overall. So these are basic, but these are sort of four main requirements. When we ask ourselves, what is actually the job of a, of a self-drilling fastener? Again, this is fairly, it's fairly simple. A fastener enables an accurate connection between two components. Those two components could be, in our, in our industry, typically 
a, a roofing sheet and a, and a substructure. So if you see at this moment in time, you see the, the, um, the, uh, the roofing sheet, the idea is to, for it to be flush to the underside of the head or the ceiling washer. I appreciate not every application asks for a ceiling washer. A lot of people fix maybe a liner sheet without a ceiling washer. However, it should be flush to the underside of the head of the fastener or the washer. And let us not forget the, the substrate is always the load bearing, bearing component. That's where all the, um, both the, the forces take, take, their, take, their, take their turn. What can possibly go wrong? Again, when we get called to, when we get called to site or we get phone calls to say, Dirk, this is not, this is not working. I can hold my hands up and I can honestly say that in 99% of all cases where we get called mm, maybe about a problem of fasteners not, not drilling, fasteners not, not tapping, it is not a problem of the fastener. The fasteners have been ordered, have been incorrectly ordered to suit the, to suit the application. If we look at example, example, example one, this, um, oh sorry. The, um, the, fastener, the fastener here clearly shows the drill point or the threads pre-engaging before the drill point has actually finished the operation. Now again, this is not, this is, this is fairly simple. A fastener can only, can only perform one operation at a time. In this case, we have asked the, the fastener has been asked to, to perform a drilling operation at the same time as forming a mating thread in the substrate. Yeah, this is not gonna, this is not gonna work. What will happen is the fastener will simply, will simply break in two pieces because it will not be able to, to, uh, to withstand these, uh, withstand these forces. Once an operation is, as is, is, once the drilling operation is finished, then the thread can start forming its mating thread in the substrate, not before. Should you have, should we get to the point where the, where the drill point is too big? Again, yes. A big drill point will, will drill through a smaller, a smaller substrate or substructure at any one time without a problem. However, because of the sheer size of the drill point, it is designed for um, applications typically maybe into hot roll purling. So putting a, putting a fastener that is designed to go into hot roll purling into a light section, cold roll, Z or C purling, uh, all it will do is it will create an oversized, an oversized hole. The fastener will literally drop into the, into the oversized hole. And if you have got an installer who maybe is not experienced enough, it will say the structure, the fasteners will stay in the structure. The next thing you will hear is a phone call. The roof is blown off. Yeah, because there's no, there's no grip, there's no thread engagement. And again, this is where we advise at any one time, please let us have details of your, of your application. It is, it is awkward, but at the same time, um, we cannot, we cannot take the risk, or we don't want to take the risk either, to say that yes, these fasteners are faulty. When in essence, it was actually a, um, a misaligned um, uh, application or installation problem. Another thing that is important for us is obviously the clamping thickness. Yeah, and the clamping thickness means how much, how much, how much of the of the tunnel, the filter above the purlin, including, including the thickness of the actual purlin. So these are, again, this is important, important for us to make a decision whether we have supplied you with the correct, correct fastener for a, certain, for a certain installation. A single skin fixing, typically 25 millimeter long, is not gonna, is not gonna hold a sandwich panel of 35, 50 millimeter, 80 millimeter in place. It's too short. So again, once we have got details of of the actual application, we can say, okay, we know you want to you want to crown fix or you want to valley fix a sandwich panel of XYZ size into a light section purlin. We will give you a fastener that you can trust is not gonna is not gonna is not gonna let the installer down and will be right for the application. The importance of using a metal backed EBDM washer to, to ensure an accurate seal. We've seen this earlier in the picture where the uh, stadium, stadium leaked and it was as a result of fastness being, being overdriven. Uh, here in a, uh, in a, in a, in a cut, 
cross cut typically we've shown an, an example of the, the fastener being over, over driven, meaning that the EPDM, which, which provides the sealing effect, has simply, been, has simply been shattered, has totally been smashed, and there's no sealing effect. The result is um, any, any rainfall, especially if these, are, these fasteners are fixed somewhere in the valley, in a, in a, in a water bearing um, area, it will, it will leak, the roof will leak. The same, the same with if it's underdriven. If there is, if the fastener st still stands proud of the, of the, of the sheet, it's not going to seal it properly. Result: water will infest and will have the same problem. We recommend, typically for, for, for the installation to, uh, to compress the washers by around 25%. I know this sounds very sort of scientific, and we'll say how can it, how can it be achieved? Here's a typical example where a washer, a fastener has been removed after a complaint came up saying the, the, roof, is, the roof is leaking, where's the problem? You can see the gray part here, the EPDM, totally, totally flattened. There's no, there's no sealing effect. The fastener on, on installation has been hopelessly overdriven. So this fastener could never provide the sealing effect as we, as we, would, like to, uh, as we would like to see. How to avoid overdrying of the fastener? Again, this is almost like teaching grandmother how to, how to soak eggs. Everybody at some stage in time has gone to site. Everybody knows how to use maybe a commercial screwdriver or at least the, installa the installation team. To ensure, to ensure an, accurate, an, accurate, um, an accurate installation, all we can do is we can make recommendations. People ask us for help. How can we ensure this is not going to happen again? How can we ensure that maybe a a less experienced installer um, is, is bringing this to a satisfactory conclusion. Answer to this would be, let's use a, nose, uh, is a depth sensitive nose piece that will ensure every single fastener that is going to be installed on that day is going to be set to the correct, to the correct setting depth. Yeah? Once, this, once it's set, it's a very simple device. Once it's set, it will just install every single fastener exactly in the same, in the same manner. Also, like uh, again, like every other, like every other materials, fastener materials have also got their their, limit, their limitations. When somebody asked me some time ago, we uh, we were looking at it to at a, at a cover for a fertilizer plant in Oman. The fertilizer plant was located off the um, not far from the not far from the sea, so we'll have a a, a highly humid condition. Add this to the temperature. Plus the fact that it's a, a fertilizer plant, which uh, is uh, also highly, uh, highly, highly, a potentially highly aggressive atmosphere. For this, for this, um, for this uh, plant, the uh, installer or the it was a row farming company who had actually given up the exploitation, has won the project, came to us and said, "Okay, this was the this was the built up. We have." We have recommended, or we have in our calculations, we have allowed for carbon steel fasteners. Now we want a warranty from you, Ayot. If we supply the, the carbon steel fasteners for this project, we need a 20-year warranty. And I said, whoa. I said, we have, got, we have got double trouble here. We've got a fertilizer plant, highly toxic in its, in its, in its alpha, highly aggressive atmosphere, plus we're having, we're having a, coastal, a coastal location. You will not get 20 years from a, from a carbon steel, from a carbon steel fastener as a, as a life expectancy, never mind, never mind a warranty in those conditions that are now known to us. So I said there's only, there's only going to be, there's only going to be one solution and this will have to be a, a stainless steel grade A, A5, which is uh, not very common, not very common in the industry. However, it is available. I say it is available from us sounds, sounds fantastic, but this is the only one we would wholeheartedly recommend to use in those conditions that we would also issue a warranty on. Yeah, but this is, this is a typical example where, oh, but this is what, not in our price calculation. We can't, we can't afford to. Now, hands up, who would like to take off the roof on a fertilizer plant in five years' time? Nobody. Yeah, the cost, the cost of the fastener, of the components, is negligible. Just imagine any of these any of these projects we were talking about. We've seen many, many this this morning. 
anything goes wrong for the sake for the sake of an extra few few pens as part of the complete package of a of a project, it's it's nothing. It's nothing. Just imagine you've got to go back to one of these in, in years to come, do do remedy work or any remedial work, sorry, and uh, and add up the cost of these. Yeah, it is important that you you are aware of the limitations of fastness. You are also uh, aware of um, of the environment or of the the, the environments those projects are actually being uh, are actually being built, because at the end of the day. The first one to come back and saying, the roof is blown off, it must be a fastener problem. Yeah? Reality is, in 99% of cases, again, it isn't. It is faulty insulation. We heard earlier this morning, the best, ex the, best, uh, the best materials used in any of those projects is no good if the actual execution is down, is, 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 is faulty. It's no different with using fasteners. Okay. This is some innovations which we, which we do for the customers and Dirk will explain this. Okay, just coming, coming back on uh, another point of what's a, a benefit of working, of working with a manufacturing company. Um, we're all aware of, uh, or you might have heard of, uh, of Kingspan, Kingspan installation. We, uh, Kingspan, again, very, very active globally. Uh, always looking, always looking for uh, new markets. I suppose a little bit like, like, um, like, Aot as well in their own right. And at the same time, um, coming to us and looking for a fastening solution for one of their new panels, which uh, in essence is the Kingspan top deck, which is a structural, um, a structural deck attached with a PVC membrane, which is used in, uh, for flat roofing applications. So instead of what Nippon mentioned earlier, to trying to mechanically fix the, the insulation and the membrane separately, Kingspan have come up with a structural deck, with a pre-engineered structural deck that encompasses already the, um, the PVC membrane. At the time, they said, okay, we want as little disturbance, obviously, as possible of the, of the PVC membrane, at the same time, we want to ensure that the, um, the, the, structure, the structure is naturally safe. What fastener can you, what can we, what can we look at? So with Kingspan, Aeon and Kingspan have developed over a period of time a fastener that could typically take care of this, which we, we call their time OptiCore. You see it has got a, a, a nylon, a plastic or injection molded nylon head. Um, it's a standard, a standard hexagon head fastener but it would enable, enable with, uh, with the geometry of the, of the head along with reaming flanges and cutting teeth to actually pierce a hole into the PVC membrane before it starts engaging into the, um, into the insulation core. And you can see on one of the um, pictures here, as soon as the, the fastener physically touches the touches the PVC membrane, it pierces the PVC membrane, it starts, it starts making its way through the insulation, thereby backfilling the insulation. The insulation gets literally rotated around, so there's no loss, no loss, of, no loss of insulation. It will finally hit the substrate. The substrate could be a, uh, a, a cold roll purlin, it could be a, a hot roll <coughs> purlin, and uh, afterwards, with uh, another, another piece of, I suppose, as you do in flat roofing, um, to, seal the, to seal the hole that has been, has been created. This is getting, it's getting welded, welded over, the, over the hole that's been created. Bear in mind, we're talking about a hole diameter of no more than 15, 15 millimeters. Now, this driving system was, and also the driving system was developed in conjunction with AOT. Just as an example, this is the sort of thing you or a, a system supplier, a system provider here in India can also, can also inspect as a, or ins uh, expect as a service from our, from our company here, which uh, I don't think is, uh, is, is, very, is very common. I will finish this presentation with a, a brief example of another, uh, I suppose, bonus, bonus or incentive to work, to work, with, a, to work with a manufacturer. For Jeddah, Jeddah Airport, we're talking about an overall 
floor area of 700,000 square meters. Um, one of our um, installers was, was asked to provide, the, um, to provide or to quote to bid at a time for the standing seam roof, which was a CalZip, a CalZip standing seam roofing system. But the consultant insisted on, on performance tests before it was a company called Da Al Handash before they could actually release, um, release our, our fasteners or gave the, gave the technical, technical okay. So we're talking initially, talking a very simple, a very simple uh, structure, fixing a, a liner sheet down, ultimately the, a top hat onto a liner sheet, and then the, um, um, the standing seam clip onto, onto the 1.5 millimeter top hat section. For those, we need to achieve a certain a certain pull-out value, which we said we, uh, we will do the tests. Therefore, we did the tests back in Germany. We've got two large application laboratories. One is in the UK and one is in Germany with uh, two large tensometers to simulate a test or performance test as we can find it in the, in the application on site. So you can see here we've done initially a test a test with the, with the fastener simply pulling it out of the top hat profile, um, which gave us a pull-out value of 3.7 kilonewton. The danger, obviously, or the concern from the, from the consultant was how much force does it actually take? How much, how much wind uplift does it actually take, simulated, to take off the clip, ultimately jeopardizing the whole, the whole, the whole roof of Jedi Airport. We're talking about a roof structure alone of nearly 300,000 square meters. So you can see here the, 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 plastic, the, plastic, the plastic clip. We were going through two different scenarios, fixing with two fasteners and alternatively fixing with, fixing with four fasteners. And in all those, in, in both cases, as you will see in a minute, the, it was the clip that broke literally before any of the fasteners even moved by one or two millimeters, not even, not even a millimeter. Yeah? So it was purely governed by the strength of the actual clip, which shows again that the, the application is not, it's not all about the, the fastest, it's also about the quality of the components that are being used. But because it is perceived that the fastener is the weakest element in the, in the construction, um, it is the one that fails first. In this case, it was, it was the clip that failed in both, in both incidents. So needless to say, in the end, the, the performance figures were sufficient for the consultant to say we can, the, the clip is going to be fixed with two fasteners, two fasteners only, well and above what is, what is, what is required. But again, these are, these are tests or these are um, application information that we can provide to anybody, provided you give us the opportunity, of course, to... Uh, to show what these what the fasteners again is not a standard fastener they have been developed specifically for standing seam system applications, and um, but they're freely freely accessible to anybody. Again, this was followed up by by protocols, by data sheets, by results to the client or to the should I say to the um, to the consultant. It gave the green light at the time. Needs to say as a, as a not just as a result, but we have done in just in the Middle East alone four airports, four airports recently all with. Roof, uh, roof areas from 50,000 square meters to uh, well over 300,000 square meters. Attached, just a brief list, these are typically clients, companies that we are working with. They would recommend not only just our, our fastness but also our overall, overall service package. Names will, ring a, names will ring a bell, we don't have to go into detail. I think what we, should, what we should remember, and I think it has come up so many times today in other presentations, we're talking about sustainability, we're talking about longevity, and we're talking about different, different materials. Yeah? We should remember, at the end of the day, the buildings, a building, any building, from a simple, from a simple warehouse to a residential complex to any tower complex, it should last, it should last for decades, not just for a couple of years. And at the end of the day, the, the effort you're going to put in, the money you're going to spend, money, 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 is always going to be a problem. Yeah, there's always financial restrictions, but don't expect miracles 
if, as the saying goes, if you spend if you spend peanuts, yeah, you get you get what you you get what you pay for. And I think this is not just a problem. This is a global a global problem. Yeah? Everybody wants everybody wants a, a lifespan of 25, 30, 35 years from fasteners, when a lot of the panel manufacturers themselves are only willing to give five or ten years. I said, where is where is the point? Why ask the faster manufacturer to provide you with a warranty that you not even you, you can't you don't even meet yourself? So, as long as we all remember that any any type of building, we should take a long term long term view. This is not just for a couple of years. It's supposed to last a long time. Remedial costs you've all been involved in it over the years maybe uh, are astronomical, and at the end of the day, the the the, uh, within the whole project, the cost of the fasteners, you're talking 0.6%. Chuck, can we conclude quickly? Anyway, we, we are, we are yes, short of time yes. now. Thank you, we finished. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.